Stephen, could you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, hello, my name is Stephen Jones. Stephen, you're obviously the defendant in this case? Yes. Stephen, before we talk about the events of October 8th, October 9th of 2015, can you tell us the jury a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you went to school? Uh, I'm, I'm from Glendale, Arizona. It's uh, um, northwest Phoenix. I went to Mountain Ridge High School um, for about a year, and I was homeschooled for the rest of it. Who did you live with when you were back in Glendale? Uh, my parents. Do you have any siblings? <coughs> no. In the fall Just a second. Just, I'm sorry, Mr. Davidson. Mr. Jones, would you pull that microphone a little bit closer to you? Okay, you're very soft-spoken. I need to hear your answers. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Davidson. Thank you, Honor. <coughs> Stephen, in the fall of 2015, did you enroll at NAU as an undergraduate? Yes. Did you have a scholarship? Yes. Um, and as of October 8th, October 9th, how old were you? I was 18. How many weeks into your college experience were you at that point? Four weeks. Okay. Um, you remember the events of October 8th? Yes. Um, let's back up a little bit and talk about where you were earlier that evening. Um, I take it you were pledging fraternity? Yes. And we had testimony earlier from Shay and Jake? Yes, I was pledging Sigma Chi. Okay. Can you tell the jury where you were and what you were doing with Shay and Jake and Hunter earlier that night? Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we, er earlier we had study hours in the Klein Library, so we went to the library to study. Um, and then um, that was around 7 o'clock. Um, and then uh, after that was over and we had finished studying, uh, we decided to go to the Grove. We've heard some testimony about the Grove. Is that an apartment complex east of yeah. Franklin? Yes. Yeah. Where did you park your car when you went to the Grove? In the Mountain View parking lot. Okay. And who went with you to the Grove? Uh, Shay, uh, Shay, Shay McConnell, Jacob Mike, and Hunter Todd. What did you guys do there? Um, we, uh, we played Guitar Hero for about an hour. And, and, then, and then what? Um, we, uh, we just hung out and then after about an hour we decided to, uh, to leave. Like we, we kind of got bored and decided to leave. What's the next thing that happened? Um, we, uh, we walked out <coughs> downstairs because we were on the fifth floor of um, the Grove and we walked downstairs. Um, and I was talking to Jake because um, he had just uh, finished up a call with his girlfriend. And um, then we started walking back toward Mountain View. What, if anything, did you notice as you approached Mountain View? Um, nothing in particular. Just um, down, down Franklin Avenue, there's all, there, there was a lot of noise and a lot of you know, parties going on in the apartments there. At some point, were you unable to locate Hunter? Yes, yeah. Um, about halfway back, uh, back to my car, we, uh, we lost track of Hunter. Um, we couldn't find where he was. So what happens from that point forward? Um, we, uh, we start texting him, um, like trying to figure out where he is. And then we decide to stop and try to call him and get him on the phone because we didn't want to just leave without him. Um, so. Um, Shay started calling him on the phone, and um, and Jake and I just kind of stood there and waited. Where were you when Shay was trying to call him on the phone and you were standing there with Jake? Um, we were in front of the courtyard. Were you on the sidewalk? Yeah, we were on the sidewalk. <clears throat> Where were you guys planning on going up until that point? Um, we were, we were going to go home. What happens as you're standing in front of the courtyard, Jake and Shay? Um, Shay's on the phone trying to call Hunter, um, and then uh, Jake, Jake and I are there talking, and then um, we realize that we're not going to get uh, Hunter on the phone, so we decided to just go back toward Mountain View, go into Mountain View and hang out there and wait for him. Um, so we started walking across the street. What's the next thing you remember? Um, it was, um, I, I heard a commotion behind me, like it was, it was pretty quiet outside, and then 
um, all, all of a sudden there was like a whole lot of voices and then I turned around and there was um, just a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of dudes and there was screaming and yelling and stuff and um, next thing I know I just got punched. Where were you punched? In, in the mouth. How hard were you punched? Um, it, uh, it just rocked my world like I, just really hard. Were you expecting that to happen? Not at all. Had you done anything physically or verbally to provoke that? Not at all. Is it something that you think could fairly be described as a sucker punch? Yes. Did the punch cause you any problems with your vision? Um, yeah, it, uh, it knocked my glasses off. Um, and then um, as I, like, I kind of fell, um, my, my, everything went dark, went black. Um, and then everything went white, um, like a flash of white. And then um, I slowly started to regain my vision. What's the very next thing you remember? Um, I, I felt someone behind me. Uh, I, I caught myself on my hands when I fell. And then as I was getting back up, I felt someone behind me try to grab my, the back of my shirt. And I started running uh, toward Mountain View. Do you hear anything while this is going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> Describe it for the jury, please. Uh, so from from the beginning, um, as, as soon as they came out and started screaming, I, I you know they were saying stuff like you know, um, what the fuck are you doing here? Get the fuck off my porch, you faggot! Um, go back to the freshman dorms. You don't fucking belong here. I'll fuck you up, you pussy. Stuff like that. Um, and then when I was running, they they were saying stuff like, you know, get the fuck back here. What the fuck are you scared of? Stuff stuff like that. Did you make it to Mountain View? Um, no. What happened? Um, I, uh, I, I, uh, I started running toward Mountain View, and uh, I, um, I kind of, so when, when I started running away, um, the three or four guys started chasing me from that first punch, and then um, as I started getting toward Mountain View, uh, I thought that they might not be behind me anymore, so I kind of stopped to look back. And then I didn't see anyone at first, so I started walking back toward um, my friends. Um, and it was in that moment that I realized I didn't have authorization on my key card to get into Mountain View. Um, and then as, as soon as I realized that, those guys who were chasing me were right back there and started running at me again, so I started running. Throughout the trial, we sort of used the term Mountain View to describe both the parking lot and the dormitory directly adjacent to it. Yeah. When you're saying you ran to Mountain View, which of those two things are you referring to? Um, I was running toward, uh, on that service drive, the, the concrete service drive on the edge of the parking lot um, toward the main entrance to Mountain View. Why were you running to Mountain View? Um, because that was where the, uh, the active members of Sigma Chi were, and I figured, you know, if I could just get inside to safety, then they could probably protect me. What's the very next thing you remember after realizing that your key card wouldn't allow you to access through that door? Um, I kind of panicked. Um, I was really, really scared and I was freaking out. Um, and I, I, uh, I remember those guys and then um, I just uh, decided I, I turned right and ran toward my car. How fast did you run toward your car? Uh, as fast as I could. What happened as you're running towards your car? Um, they're, they're still chasing me um, at that point and, it's, you know, saying all kinds of stuff. And, um, and then I, uh, I, I got, um, I, I reached in my back left pocket, which was where my electronic key fob was for um, the door of my car. So I started um, frantically mashing all the buttons on the key fob um, to try to get it unlocked. And then... Um, the, you know, it, it unlocked and the car alarm went off for a second and then turned back off. And um, I, I got, got to the car. You said they were saying all kinds of stuff. Do you recall specifically what was being said? You know, I'll fucking kill you, pussy, stuff like that. Why were you running to your car at that point? Because um, I couldn't get into Mountain View. What happens once you get to your car? Um, I, uh... I sit in the driver's seat, and um, I, 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 they're right behind me, and 
um, I'm panicking and I know they could be on me at any second. So I, uh, I start frantically looking for my keys because um, my, uh, my key fob is separate from my keys and I usually keep my key fob <laughs> in my back left pocket um, but I didn't know where my keys to start the car were so I started frantically looking and then I, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to find them before those guys were on top of me. What's the very next thing you remember? Um, I just, um, I realized that you know, I, did, I didn't have my glasses and I couldn't really see and I was, you know, my legs were shaking and I was, you know, panicked and um, I realized, oh my God, you know, I have to do something so I, I got the gun out of my glove box. What's the next thing that happens, Stephen? Um, um, when, I, when I get the gun, I, uh, I instinctively chamber it around and I, uh, I yelled as loud as I possibly could, don't fucking move, I have a gun, get on the ground. <laughs> Where were you when you yelled that out? Uh, in, the, in the driver's seat. What's the next thing you remember happening? Um, and I turn around and I look and those guys who were chasing me were, you know, over there and I yelled it again. And I said, get on the ground, don't fucking move, I have a gun. What happens next? Um, I, I couldn't really see too well. So um, I, I turned the flashlight on and I got out of the car and um, I kind of saw them over there and I um, moved toward them and I said it again as loud as I could, don't fucking move, I have a gun, get down. When you say them, who are you referring to? The guys who were chasing me. How did they respond? Um, the, the one on the right, he said, I'll fucking kill you. And then the one on the left um, got, called me a pussy or something. Um, and then they charged at me. Um, and then, and then, and then at, the, at the last second, um, the one on the right lunged toward me. Do you recall how far apart you were from these two guys at that point? Um, it seemed at the time five or ten feet. And what did you observe specifically as you say he lunges at you? Um, his, uh, <coughs> his, hands were, his hands were up like this. And um, they were running as fast as they could, full force, looking me dead in the eye, straight down this, like a rock slope. Um, and then at the last second, he moved forward, like off his back foot. Uh, and then what's the very next thing that you remember? Uh, I, I fired my gun. What was going through your mind when you fired the gun, Steve? Um, I knew that if I waited even another split second, I would get seriously hurt or die because they were right there on top of me. What happened when you fired? Um, yeah. The, the one on the right went down. Um, and then I, I moved, I swiveled toward the left. And then the one on the left went down as well. Fired shots at both of them. Yes. They both go down. Yes. What's the very next thing that you do? Um. I uh. I uh, scan left to right, um, looking to see if anybody else was coming toward me, and then um, everybody else was still back up on the sidewalk, the service drive. So I uh, I tucked the gun in the back of my waistband. Um, and I ran over to the one on the right to try to um, give first aid, because I'm, I'm first aid certified, so I went over to try to treat his wounds. Is that the individual you later come to know as Colin Brew? Yes. And what happens as you're kneeling down trying to give aid to Mr. Brew? Um, I, uh, I kneeled down next to him, and I propped his head up, and uh, I noticed blood like around this area. So I started applying direct pressure, um, and then as soon as I did that, there was another guy right there next to him, and uh, he goes, what the fuck is wrong with you, you psycho, and he pushes me backwards. You fall backwards? A little bit, yeah. And then what happens? Um, as soon as he pushed me, someone uh, from behind me ran up and tried to grab the gun from 
my waistband. Um, and then um, as soon as that happened, all the rest of them kind of just piled on top of me. Um, and so I reached as quickly as I could behind my back and got my hand on the gun and I um, pushed it downward into my pants as hard as I possibly could. Um, and he was tugging back on it. Um, and then um, the rest of them, they were you know, kicking and punching and wailing. And one guy was stomping on my stomach and they were screaming, and you shot my friend, you fucking psycho. You know, I'll fuck you up, I'll fucking kill you, you, fu you know. And, um, and then um, the, the one behind me still had his hand on the gun. So, um, yeah, that, that's what happened. What's going through your mind as all this is happening? Um, I was screaming as loud as I could, help, help, you know, like a really high, loud, loud scream. Like, um, and I, I thought they were going to get my gun and kill me with it. The next thing you remember? Um, I held on for my life, and I just, um, it was getting increasingly desperate. Um, I realized I wasn't going to be able to hold them off forever because there were like four or five of them, and they were kicking, you know, it's like, one of, one of them was still pulling on the gun, and I was getting kicked and punched, and um, I, I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to break free, so I, I pulled the gun upward out of my pants. What did you do with it? Um, I, I fired in the air to try to get them to run away. Were you trying to hit anybody? No. Were you able to fire rounds? Yes. What's the next thing you remember? Um, um, as soon as the gun came out, um, I remember um, the guy who was trying to get it, um, he just immediately let go of it, um, and I never really saw what happened to him. And then the ones who were in a circle in front of me that I could see, they all kind of turned away like this. Um, and then uh, I, yeah. What's the next thing you remember after you see the people turning away from you? Um, after I broke free, I um, stood up and, and um, backed away toward the corner of that parking lot by the rock slope to try to get the, uh, the, like the high ground so I could see better and see if anybody was coming at me. Were you approached by someone? Yes. Describe that for the jury, please. Um, it was a, sh a short, shorter guy. Um, with a, I think it might have been a flannel t-shirt, or a flannel button-up, and um, he, uh, he came running up uh, the side toward, um, along that fence by the, uh, the soccer field, I think it is, um, and he reached behind me and tried to put his hand on the gun again. Was he someone that you recognized from earlier? Yes. Where did you recognize him from? Um, from re that corner trying to get the gun the second time. Um, and then what happens as he approaches you the second time as you're standing over on the dirt um, hill? I had the gun behind my back like this to try to guard it. Um, and then I was kind of facing toward the parking lot and he came up from the fence so it was my left. And I, I looked at him and then I kind of went to bring the gun forward and then he just turned around and ran away so I put it back behind my back. What happens after that? Steve? Um, like right after that, um, I feel somebody tap me on the shoulder and I turned around and, um, he said, um, you know, hey, you can put the gun down, you know, you're safe now. And I go, no, that guy keeps trying to get my gun. And, um, and he goes, no, I, you can put it down here. I won't let anybody take it. You're safe now. You know, you can just, you know, put down the gun. This individual who approaches you and taps you on the shoulder, did he later become Chase Jones? Yes. What happens after you had this conversation with Chase? Um, I, then after I put the gun down, I heard the sirens. I heard police sirens. And um, I saw red and blue lights on Franklin Avenue, so I started walking toward um, the police. What was going through your mind as you heard the sirens and you walked towards the police? I was really relieved. I thought, you know, oh my God, I'm safe now. You know, like the, the cops are here. I can just go to them and it's all over, you know, it's, it's perfect, it's, they, they can protect me. What happens as you approach the police? Um, the, the officer in that car opened the door and he had a rifle pointed at me. Um, 
and I, I had my hands up like this, and my, you know, my face was bleeding. Um, and he goes, where's the shooter? Where's the shooter? And I said, you know, I'm, I'm the shooter. And he goes, where's the shooter? I said, I'm the shooter. Um, and then he arrested me. Was that Officer Park? Yes. Does Officer Park put you in the back of his car? Yes. Are you there for some period of time? Yes. What happens after that? Um, I, that uh, when I got into the cop car, that was like when I could finally, you know, like I was safe, so I kind of broke down. Broke down how? Um, Relevance. All out briefly. Go ahead. Uh, screaming and crying. What was going through your mind at that time? Um, Same objection. I'll sustain the objection. Um, did you feel any type of physical illness as you were sitting back of the car? I was nauseous. Did you have the officers open the door in case you had to vomit? Yes. And then are you transported somewhere after? You are placed in the back of the car scene? Yes, they took me to the police station. What happens there? Um, I, they, they did an interview there. Did you answer their questions? Yes. Do you recall approximately how long they interviewed you? About eight hours. And then at the conclusion of the interview, um, you had some photographs taken? Yes. Did they take any blood or other samples from you? Yes, um, meat, blood, and urine. Let me go back through the incident and ask you some specific questions to clarify some things, if I could. OK. Um, now, when you had first parked your car at the Mountain View lot earlier that night, yeah. and walk to the Grove, did you have occasion to walk in front of the courtyard? Yes. Did you have any contact with anybody there at that time? There was somebody out in front of the courtyard when we were walking toward the Grove that I recognized from my dorm hall. Um, and I knew, he, his, I think his name was Davis. Um, I knew he was a Delta Chi. So I kind of said, I stopped to say hi, you know, what's up? As you return later on in the night after you're at the Grove and you approach <laughs> courtyard, are you able to hear or get an idea based on what you hear of what's going on inside? Um, this, the door was shut and the blinds were closed, so it was like muffled music, like you, the bass reverberations, and you could hear yelling and partying inside. Did you know, either based on your interaction with this kid from your dorm or something else that happened, that there were a lot of Delta Chi members at that party? Yeah, um, on, on the way up to the Grove, we, uh, we kind of chit-chatted about um, who I met there, and um, we, we kind of just figured it was a Delta Chi house. Um, what did you know about the Delta Chi's at that point? Um, in relevance? It goes to a state of mind, Your Honor. Again, relevance. Approach, please. <clears throat> Did the fact that these young men were members of the Delta Chi community contribute to the decisions you made that night? No. When you are in front of the, ho in front of the courtyard and um, you're punched, do you have a recollection of specifically where you were? I, I, was, I think I was in the middle of the street in the middle of Franklin Avenue. When you got to the Mountain View dorm, how close did you get before you realized that your key card wouldn't open it for you? Um, probably about, I, I don't know, I, don't, I couldn't tell you, but 
past the past the A wing entrance. Um, there's a side door, and then the main door. I was past the side door. You indicated before that you looked back at that time. Yes. At that time. Okay. And what, if anything, were you able to see without your glasses? Um, I just saw a big mob of guys on um, the service drive there, and then. Um, I, I saw Jake and Shay in that mob, so I wanted to go over there and kind of check on them, and then that's when the two guys started chasing me. Approximately how many people emerged from the courtyard? Uh, between 10 and 12. What, if anything, let me, let me back up. Uh, did you see Jake and Shay near the group of 10 to 12? Yes. What was going on, best you could tell? Um, they were surrounded and getting pushed and shoved and cursed at, and um, I saw um, Shay uh, get punched, and then um, I saw guys kind of like, you know, just sur surrounding them, like they, they, weren't, they weren't letting them leave. Did it appear to you as though Jake and Shay were pushing back, or that they were backing up and trying to retreat from the situation? Uh, um, uh, they, they had been saying stuff like, you know, what the, you know, what the fuck is your problem, man? I'm, I'm, we're leaving. Just leave us alone. Um, and they were, you know, backing up and they were doing like the shrug, you know, like kind of shrugging and backing up. Based on what you observed at that point, what concerns did you have about their safety? Um, I thought they were going to get beat up really bad. Now, you indicated it's around that time that you then go to your car, correct? Correct. Why were you going to your car at that point? Um, because I, uh, I was going to uh, get in the car so we could all get in and leave. I was going to try to drive away. When you say all, who are you referring to? Jake and Shay. Do you know where Hunter is at this point? No, no idea. Fair to say you still don't have your glasses at this point? No. You indicated that Approximately, or, or I'm sorry, you said two people from the group were chasing you as you went to your car? Yes. Can you describe how you noticed that or at what point it was you saw these guys chasing you? Um, it was after I had paused to look back the first time um, on the service drive, those two guys started chasing me. So um, they, as, as I ran in my car, they were chasing me. Um, I, I, could, I could tell... Um, because of, you know, I could, like, hear their footsteps and, you know, them talking to each other and, you know, I, yeah. What specifically were they saying as they were chasing into your car? Um, I, I can't remember a lot of it, but I remember hearing, you know, I'll fuck you up, and one of them called me a faggot, um, and then they were talking to themselves. Did you have a chance to look back before you reached your car? No. <coughs> Still understood or believed that they were chasing you? Yes. Based on? Uh, based on the footsteps, and they had chased me all the way there already, and, um, you know, I could hear them talking. You indicated that you were going to your car because you wanted to pick up your friends and take off. Yeah. Um, as you approach your car, do you know what's going on with Jake and Shay at that point? Um, no. Are you worried about them? Yes. Why are you worried about them? Um, because the last time I saw them, they were... Uh, getting beat up and surrounded. So you talked earlier about the fact that you have a key fob and a key. Could you explain that to the jury a little bit? Um, my key fob had broken off of my keys, off of the key ring, um, a long time before that. And I uh, used strips of duct tape to put it on the key ring. Um, but when I got to college, it kind of just separated and the, the glue on the tape melted and um, they wouldn't stay together anymore, so I just started keeping them separate. Did you keep them in separate pockets or the same pocket? I, I kept the clicker in the back left pocket, and I usually kept the keys clipped to my belt with a carabiner. How did being punched and what you had just been through affect your ability to pull out your key or unlock the car? Um, I, w I was, when I was in the car? As you approached the car. Oh, um, I, I just couldn't, I, my hands were kind of shaking and I didn't have fine motor control, so I just um, started mashing all the buttons on the clicker in the hopes that it would unlock the car. At this point, do you know exactly how far behind you these two guys are chasing? No. And then as you mash the buttons on the key fob, the door unlocks? Yes. 
I gather you approach your car from the driver's side? Yes. And then what happens when you enter the car? Um, as soon as I get in, I, fl I fly into the seat and I start frantically looking for my keys everywhere I can. I was patting my pockets and um, I was looking all around, you know, sh shirt, whatever. Um, and then I just realized, you know, oh my God, I, I can't find my keys. Fair to say you didn't reach for your pistol when you first got in the car? No. And then once you realize that it's going to be difficult to get your keys to start the car, what's your next step? Um, I, uh, I kind of, I, I panicked, like I was, I was, I just freaked out and I thought to myself, oh my God, I need to get my gun. Now at this point, had you yet looked back to see if these two guys are still chasing you or how far away they are? Uh, no, I, I just knew they were right behind me and I've only had seconds. From where in your car do you recover the pistol? The glove box. Was it locked? No. You open up the glove box and then you take out the pistol? Yes. As you're taking out the pistol, do you say anything? Do you yell anything? Yeah, I yell, don't fucking move, get on the ground, I have a gun. Which way are you facing as you say those things while grabbing your pistol? Toward the passenger side. Okay. And then what happens next? Um, and then I turn around and look out the door. So you turn to the left? Yes. Okay. And then what do you see <laughs> at that very moment? Um, I saw those two guys who were chasing me. You have a recollection looking back as to how far they seemed at that point? Um, maybe 10 or 15 feet. And then you get out of the car at that point? Yes. Okay. And walk me through exactly what happens at that point. Um, so I was looking to my left in the passenger seat, um, and I couldn't really see too well. I could just see like two dark figures because I didn't have my glasses. And um, they started walking toward me. Um, I, I, I think they heard me yell something and they started walking toward me. Um, and then I couldn't really see, so I turned on the flashlight and I stepped out of the car to see. Why'd you turn the flashlight on? So I could see better. Was there any other reason you turned on the flashlight? No. At that point, did you think that you were going to have to shoot your gun? Did you make the decision to shoot your gun at this point? No. Okay. And you indicated they were walking in your direction? Yes. Okay. Are you walking towards them? Yes. Okay. And then what happens? Um, and then I say it again. I said, don't fucking move. Get on the ground. I have a gun. Um, and they, uh, they kind of, um, uh, the, the one on the right says, I'm going to fucking kill you. The one on the left called me a pussy, I think. This all happens around the same time? Yes. Okay. And then what's the very next thing that happens? Um, and then... Um, they uh, they charge straight at me um, with their fists like like this um, as fast as they could, looking me dead in the eye. Um, and then right at the last second, the one on the right um, like launches at me, lunges toward me. What's going through your mind at this point? Fear. Um, I was just, oh my God, I'm I'm gonna get really hurt right now. What did you think was going to happen to you if you didn't fire your gun at that moment? I thought they would either beat me up right there on the spot or they would get my gun and shoot me with it. Do you know where Jake or Shay are at this point? Um, they're back in, I, I assume they were back in the mob of guys on the service drive. If I heard you wrong, please correct me, but I think you said there were approximately four to five people that basically pile on you? Yes. As you're trying to render aid to Colin? Yes. And you explained to the jury that you were actually pushing your pistol down into the waistband of your pants? Yes, I was trying to keep it. Um, uh, so, so the person who had it was trying to pull it upwards, so I was pushing it downwards in the opposite direction to try to keep it on me. Um, and then when, um, when I had to pull it out, he was already pulling in that direction, so it came out. Do you know where Shay and Jake are as you're underneath this pile? I think I might have caught a glimpse of Jake up on the sidewalk laying down like 
uh, like leaning back, sitting kind of. Did you have any concerns about their safety at that point? Yes, I thought they were going to get really beat up by those guys. When you were first, to back up a little bit, Stephen, when you were first contacted by these guys out in front of courtyard, did you make any observations as to whether or not they appeared to have been drinking? Yeah, they were obviously drunk and angry. Had you done anything to provoke these guys? <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. When you get to that moment where the two guys approach you and the fists are balled up and the subject on the right is lunging at you, do you stay stationary? Do you move forward? Do you move backward? What movement are you doing at this point? I, I think I shuffled backward a little bit, just like a half step or so um, right before. Why did you do that? Uh, just to create more space between us to try to make like a buffer. Now you indicated that after you were arrested, um, or you're taken into custody, excuse me, you talked to the police for approximately eight hours, correct? Correct. And you answered their questions about what happened that night? Correct. When you were speaking to the police, did you try to answer their questions as accurately as you could? I did. Um, through the course of this case, um, have you come to realize that some of the distances and locations that you may have specified for the police may have been a bit inaccurate. I have. Um, do you have any reason to dispute that there's approximately 90 feet between where your Mustang was parked and where the shooting occurred? No, I do not. Did it seem like 90 feet that night? No, not at the time. Describe what it seemed like that night. It seemed like a handful of steps. Um, as I was walking toward my friends, it just seemed like a handful of steps. When you came out of your car and you encounter these two individuals, um, would you agree it's pretty obvious now that that ultimately resulted in a shooting that happened toward the southeast corner of the parking lot. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Sure. Based on everything you've seen and heard and you, you now know about the case, you wouldn't dispute that the shots were fired closer to the southeast corner of the parking lot? No. Is that where it all seemed to have occurred at the time? No. At that time, what was your perception or understanding about where this had all played out? Um, so. The, there's the the southeast corner, um, and then to the left of that, there's a part where the pavement meets the sidewalk, and that's where people drive to leave to turn left and leave the parking lot. Um, and I thought it happened in that area. What was going through your mind as you were sitting in the car, trying to fumble for your keys? I was just panicking and like extreme fear. I just thought, you know, these guys just just beat me up and knocked out my teeth and they chased me to my car and they're telling me they're going to kill me and fuck me up and calling me a faggot and I just thought they were going to be on me any second and I was freaking out. Did you feel that you were safe in the car? Absolutely not. Why not? Because um, I, c I couldn't find my keys and I was just a, like a sitting duck there in my car and they could run up and drag me out or break the window or anything. When you removed the pistol from your glove box, were you planning on shooting somebody? Absolutely not. When you exited the car and you're announcing that you have a gun and you're telling them to back up or get on the ground, whatever it is you said, were you planning on shooting somebody at that point? No. At any time prior to this subject lunging at you while the two individuals have bald fists, did you plan on shooting anybody? No. Did you feel as if you did not fire your weapon at that moment that you yourself could have been killed? I knew that if I didn't fire right then, I would get seriously hurt or die. 
There was no doubt in my mind. At any point, Stephen, during your encounter with this group of 10 to 12 guys, did you see anybody holding something in their hand? Um, the, uh, in the very beginning, when they all came out of the house, um, someone was holding a beer bottle, and I thought I heard, saw them swinging it, or it might have been a rock or something. Let's jump forward a little bit and now talk about what's going through your mind as you're underneath the pile. I think you said before that you had some concerns about your safety at that point as well. Yes, I did. <coughs> Specifically, what type of things are being said to you? Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, the same kind of stuff as before. Um, one guy, the guy who was stomping on my stomach, he said, um, you just shot my friend. What the fuck is wrong with you? And then um, one guy had me in a headlock, and he was just screaming, like, fuck you, over and over and over. Um, and then um, some, somebody had um, my left arm, and they were twisting it as hard as they possibly could. And um, I, 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 he, he was just, you know, um, you, psycho, fuck you, that kind of stuff. Fair to say you're overpowered at this point? Yes. At the time you fired your gun up into the air, did you feel as though you had any other alternatives at that point? No. What did you think would have occurred had you not fired your pistol into the air? I would have eventually just muscle fatigue and I wouldn't have been able to hold on to my pistol and they would have overpowered me and I would have lost it and they would have shot me with it. When you fired the pistol from underneath the pile, did you at any time specifically point the gun at any particular person? No. In fact, you tried to point the gun straight up in the air so that nobody would be hit, correct? I was trying to fire in the air to get him to run away. It was pitch, it was like middle of the night. It was really dark. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Stephen, I'm handing you exhibits 441, 442, 443, 447. Do you recognize what this photograph is Yes. Can you describe it for the jury? Um, do you want me to do them in order? Just generally, what do the four of them depict? Um, the service drive of Mountain View. Um, and then uh, the street, Franklin Street, in front of the courtyard. Do those pictures appear to be taken during daylight hours or nighttime hours? Nighttime. Do those pictures appear to reflect lighting conditions as they existed at that time? Yes. Your Honor, I move to admit 441, 442, 443, 447. No objection. 441, 42, 43, and 47 are admitted. <laughs> Commissioner Publisher, Your Honor? Yes.
as the machine heats up and the picture gets brighter, so you don't know if at some point you're able to recognize what it is we're looking at. Okay. What's this, Stephen? It looks like um, Franklin Avenue in front of the courtyard. Is this what it usually looks like at night? Um, yes, I think so. Are you able to make this out? Yes, that's the service drive in front of Mountain View Hall. Does there appear to be a flashlight that was used when this picture was taken? Yeah, it's it's right there in the middle. Is this what the lighting conditions look like as you look into the parking lot on October 8th? Um, it was darker. Next picture, please. Are you able to make that out? Um, that's the service drive in front of Mountain View. I'll ask you the same questions about the lighting conditions as they compare to October 8th. Um, no, it was darker. Does there appear to have been a flash that was used with this camera? Yeah. Yes. Next picture. And what's this? If you know. I can't tell. Okay. Yes. 